smurfing or slow motion surfing, an extreme sport that we love. The original idea was it would go very fast, but with the 2.5 horsepower engine, we weren't going very fast. Anyway, the whole idea was still an extreme sport that also involves getting concussion. We decided to walk up the Duke's nose late in the afternoon. It's normally a 45 minute walk, but we can do it in 60 minutes. The dirt track is very hard to walk up without falling over and it is especially hard with jandals on. The track led to a very steep bit and at the end there is a metal bar that used to be a swinging chain that was difficult to climb up. They probably changed it because it was more solid and because you can rely on it more. I like the swinging chain more because it was more of a challenge. Pretty good views from up here on top of uh, the Duke's nose. What are you pointing at there, Daniel? Uh, and we've just climbed up the Duke's nose. Started off at the beach down there and walked up here and climbed some metal stuff. And yeah. yeah getting it's a pretty amazing landscape, isn't it? Yeah. And there's a canyon up there that we went up this morning, eh? Yeah. Right up there around the corner. The view was amazing from the top of the Duke's nose. We played our new game called Cheese Touch and built a secret hut by the cliff top. Come away from the <laughs> Magic trick! You ready for a magic trick? <laughs> Whoa! Whoa. Oh, we are the four amigos! Ha! Ha! For our silly four amigos chant, we set off back down the track. It was quite tricky and we had to climb down the rock face backwards holding on to the rail. Don't get money. Dada, can what you are you doing, Daniel? Nothing. What would I be doing? Go on, Matthew, come and escape. Come on. <laughs> come on, come and escape. I can't remember being just disgusted by something. Like, disgusted by your song choice. Pull me up, Daniel. Pull me up out of this horrible place. <laughs> We set the swing up for the first time at Whangaroa. We attached our harness to the spinnaker halyard at the top of the mast and can swing the whole length of the boat. I want to go on it all the time now because it's awesome. For the second time, we quickly motored up the canyon to go for a swim in the water hole. We had seen some people doing some bombs, so we tried it. At some point in the water hole, it was really deep. If you jumped in the wrong place, you would hit the bottom. Everybody, this is school camp, okay, for this year. Bombs away. Um, so we just got the canyon, and this is cool freshwater pool kind of thing here. And it's got like a high rocky wall and it's really good for doing bombs off and it's really deep. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's cool. Well, tide's going out now, isn't it? So we yeah. better get going before we get stuck. It was a really beautiful walk up the canyon and it took about 45 minutes. We took my backpack and had turns carrying it to help mum and dad. Oh, yeah, this is cool. It's pretty deep over there. We walked to a new water hole and had our lunch in the shade. 
It was really hot that day, so I went back and did some more bombs with the rocks. So we had a nice walk up to the waterhole and after a bit of a picnic we got into our togs and jumped off the 4 metre high rock wall. The water is exceptionally warm and deep enough for Dad to stand up with his hands above his head and not break the surface. We fiddled around with the GoPro and did some more bombs. After our swims, we had a peaceful walk back to Lane Cove Heart. Sounded cool with all the different bird tweets. We were carrying the bags because we were training for when we have to go to Europe. I carried it most of the way back because I couldn't be bothered untying it from myself. We started doing diving school and bomb school so we could learn to dive nicely off the cabin top. Some of our friends, Tony and Peggy, told us about a river that led to Kaya. Kaya was where our friends got their fresh food from. It was just the thing we were looking for because we needed something to do and also because we needed fresh food. It was five miles up and it took us one and a half hours. There were some cows and horses and the cows charged us in a stampede. It was a winding river but we loved it because there were lots of fish jumping. And here we are entering the uh, little town of Kaio. Very exciting. Luckily we're not breaking the speed limit but we're racing the tide to get back down again before it gets too shallow. Um, we are just up a uh, waterway um, that we were going up to um, the four square at Kaio. Yeah, and we just um, are gonna leave now. We're yeah. eating ice creams. Yeah, bought a load of food, got an ice cream, and the tides just started going out. So we've got about uh, half an hour. I don't know. Yeah, it's about an hour and a half back, about five, five or six miles, and the tides are already starting to flow past us here. So let's catch the tide. We got our food very quickly because we were rushing to get back to the dinghy. We bought some ice creams and then scurried back down the hill to catch the tide. We motored back past the boys who were bumming off the rocks. One of them bombed right next to us and got us a bit wet. Perfecto! We love to practice our guitars while moving to different spots. Daniel and I like sitting up on the back because we can play our guitars as loud as we want. So we're just up at the top of the Jeep's nose and, and we climbed up there at about 16 minutes and found boxes just over there. Yeah, swinging around. Yeah. Cool, we just come up to get some sunset photos, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, by the drone. Yeah, and Mum and Hannah are way back. Well, this is probably the best viewpoint in Whangaroa Harbour. Here's the Duke's nose from eight different angles. The Duke's nose is called the Duke's nose because if viewed from the side, it looks like a Duke with an oversized nose. The face is everything a human face has. A set of eyes, a huge mouth, and most of all, a huge nose. The best parts of Whangaroa Harbour are viewed only by boat 
but you can also hike two hours from Totra North. There's a cool little dock hut that you can camp at for a few days at a time. Anyway, we're in these shots, but about 60% of the time, you can't really see us because everything else is so huge. There are not too many beaches around Whangara, but the landscapes are just amazing. We went over to the dock hut and did some washing and had a fire in the fireplace. Come ashore to sure. Lane Co. Hut, and um, we've collected some wood for the fire. And we're going to light a fire, and we've just been taking photos of cool things and um, fun things. Um, Doing a bit of washing, actually, haven't we? Yeah, we have. Yeah. Um, and we've been eating lots of lollies and drinking Raro beers and wine, and we're right. going to eat some chips. Sure. And Town Fox is out there. Where's Town Fox? Way over there. Yeah. Yeah, out the back there. Yep. Cool. <laughs> What's going on here? Uh, building a fire oh, at, look. was it, the Lane Cove hut? Yep. Yeah. And, um, it's, and we rented it out. Yeah. Almost rented it out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're just keeping after yeah, it, looking after it. Just, yeah. We decided to have a campfire at the dock cabin that night. We all went and collected logs and twigs. We set the fire up and then we lit it. We stayed there for about two hours and then we went back to the boat in the dark. It's kind of dark. Where's the boat? Right here. Right here, Katie. Oh, did that so well, Katie. Well done, Boris. Yeah, I know, right? I'm so good, Katie. My God.